Low rank players arguably have the most problems in Overwatch 2. Aside from lacking poor skills with base fundamental mechanics, players will also have inadequate game sense and decision making. My name is Halsey, and in today's video, I'm going to try and apprehend common low rank mistakes, how to fix them, ultimately ranking up fast in Overwatch 2. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Enjoy! To help simplify the rank up process, I've created a three phase plan to help you guys understand the core mechanics of the game and how to improve on each one of them. Now before we get into this three phase rank up plan, I need to briefly explain one very important concept. This concept I want you guys to understand is that your rank doesn't actually matter within Overwatch 2. Every time you queue up for a game, you should be looking to improve your skill level and not your actual rank. If you play to actually improve instead of playing to rank up, your rank will actually correlate with your skill level. For example, if I'm playing like a diamond to master tier player and my rank is only silver, eventually if I play enough games, I'm gonna reach diamond or master tier. But if I'm only actually playing to rank up, say I'm silver and I just want to get to gold, but I'm not playing to actually improve, it's going to take me a lot longer to reach gold. So ultimately, before we get into this three phase plan, the best thing you can do is to come in with an improvement mindset and not to play for a rank increase. Now, the first step of the three phase plan is to understand your role in Overwatch 2. Now, being that there's three roles within Overwatch, each of them has their own unique set of abilities and what they're supposed to do in a team environment. The support provides utility, heals, and DPSs when everyone is at full HP. The tanks are meant to create space for the rest of the team, and the DPS is to deal damage. All three of these roles work in such a way that provide a ebb and flow towards the team. If one of the members isn't fulfilling their role, it's going to disrupt this ebb and flow and make it harder for your team to win. For example, say a support on your team is playing Ana, but they're not focusing on healing, they're more so focusing on dealing damage and DPSing the enemy. This means they're not focusing on heals. This means that the tank is going to have to play more careful, therefore less space is created, and there's less chance of winning the game because there isn't space being created by the tank. Now typically in lower divisions, people do not understand their role. This is where the concept of outsmarting comes in. Usually lots of people are caught out of position, supports are playing the front line, DPSs aren't taking high grounds, tanks are playing in the back line. There's lots of positional mistakes that low elo players make because they don't understand what they're supposed to do as their role. So this is the first step in ranking up fast in Overwatch 2. You really need to understand your role, what your character is trying to do, and how it functions within the team comp. By doing this, it will allow you to position correctly and look out for specific interactions that both team compositions have. Now this is going to lead me into the second phase of the plan, which is gameplay. Now there's three very important concepts about gameplay that you should always be thinking about in an Overwatch 2 game. The first gameplay concept I want to talk about is communication. Using your microphone and having good communication with your teammates can significantly increase your chances of winning a game. Typically things I communicate and use my mic for is calling out if an enemy is low health, calling out if I see an important cool cooldown use such as Roadhog's hook, or even just discussing in-game plans such as using a Symmetra teleport or something along those lines. This is going to help you make yourself as a player more aware of what's going on around you. While yes, being a highly skilled player is very important in Overwatch 2, it's also a team-based game. So having good communication with your teammates will significantly win you more games. Now the second part of gameplay that's very important is to have correct spacing with whatever character you're playing. Let me put this into perspective for you guys. So characters such as Cassidy and Soldier76 have damage drop off with their primary fire. In this example, let's use Cassidy. Cassidy will be dealing full damage when he is under 25 meters. Anything past that, he's going to be dealing less damage and therefore has a damage drop off. So therefore, the optimal range to play with Cassidy is 24 meters or less to be dealing the maximum amount of damage. Now, in an ideal, perfect world, you're always going to be playing at this maximum 24 meter range to be dealing the maximum amount of damage as possible while also staying safe. Now, you're not always going to be within this 24 meter damage drop off, but it just gives you a rough idea of what kind of spacing you should be playing at with the character. 
Now the most important part of gameplay is to have proper positioning and utilizing high grounds whenever you can. Having good high ground usage is probably one of the most important things you can do in Overwatch. It makes you harder to hit, easier to hit headshots, and it will also increase your damage output tremendously because you're not putting yourself in as much danger. From many of the low elo games that I've seen, most people don't even use the high grounds, so make sure you're utilizing them because they will aid in your climb tremendously. Now quickly, I just want to draw your attention to the background footage, and we're going to freeze the frame here. Now in this specific situation, both teams understand that if you're in this red zone, most likely you're going to die and you're not going to be able to output any damage. That's why we see the enemy team playing the other high ground while we have four of our five teammates on the opposite high ground. Now, as you move up in ranks, high ground becomes even more important. So if you can get into the habits now while you're in low ranks, that way it won't become such a foreign concept to you. Most of the time before even team fighting, there's always fights over the high ground at stake. That's just because both teams understand how important it really is to control it. This is going to lead me into the third part of our three phase plan to rank up, and that is Overwatch 2 team fights. Now, just like gameplay, there's also three very important things to understand during team fights, and these three are target priority, aggression, and ultimate usage. So during a team fight, it's very important to communicate who you're actually hitting at the moment. This will allow players on your team to help you focus the same target and ultimately eliminate an opponent. Usually the highest target priority is focusing the supports whenever possible. Usually the team that eliminates the supports first often wins the team fight. This is because supports provide a massive amount of utility and healing for the team and if one of them gets eliminated most of the time you're going to win the team fight if it's not already close. The next thing in team fights is to see opportunities to be aggressive on your opponents. If you see an opportunity to be aggressive, most of the time you should take that opportunity, especially when the enemy team is missing key cooldowns. A prime example of this is using your ultimate as Genji when the enemy team has burnt most of their cooldowns. Genji's ultimate is one of the most aggressive in the entire game and can force players to run away from a team fight. You should not be initiating the team fight with Genji's ultimate because that makes you a prime target and all the enemy's crowd control will be burnt on you. Speaking of ultimates, it's very important to use your ultimates at key moments, but it's also very important not to save your ultimates. For example, going back to the Genji example, you shouldn't be waiting for the ideal two to three man dragon blade. Because of all that time you spend waiting, it can be used to farm up another ultimate, which can ultimately give your team the advantage. Instead, you should be looking for opportunities to use your ultimate almost right away. That way you're not hanging on to it, and it also gives you the opportunity to switch characters if you have to. Holding on to your ultimate in Overwatch is probably one of the worst possible things that you can do because it just wastes so much value that you can be getting out of just attacking your opponents and charging up another ultimate. So utilizing this three phase rank up plan, you should be able to understand your role in Overwatch 2, understand what you should be able to do within your gameplay, and also understand team fights. In combination of having an improvement mindset, not only will this allow you to rank up faster, it will also help you achieve the rank that you've always wanted to. If you have any further questions on specific situations, drop a comment down below and I'll be there to answer it. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like and also subscribe. My name is Halsey and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.